So financial research in Sweden has been uh, blossoming in the last 10 years. Uh, I think that I can say that uh, the Swedish House of Finance and the um, Department of Finance at the Stockholm School of Economics uh, are uh, um, among the very best uh, group uh, um, doing financial research in Europe and uh, in the world. So I would say that the very best finance research is on sustainable finance. Why? Well, what we study is organizational structure, incentives of financial intermediaries, of other market participants to promote the best investment opportunities, to avoid the financial crisis, excess risk-taking, and so on. The sustainable finance is about two, two things essentially. First of all, it's sort of a long-term approach to, to finance. Okay, so it's really this idea of incorporating a long-term vision. And then secondly, it's, it's very much about incorporating social, environmental and governance aspects in the selection and valuation of, of assets or uh, into investment management. So I think like, the definitions have really converged around these two aspects, so the long-term view and the incorporation of environmental, social and governance issues. Environmental, social and governance issues have become of much more importance to investors and, um, and so if we look we see that Millennials, women in particular, are very interested in investing according to um, to companies' ESG profiles. Uh, we see we see funds that that use ESG to be growing more in terms of, of the flows into those funds. Uh, I, my research also that I talked about was looking at the relationship between long-term investors and companies' ESG profiles, and we find that long-term investors tend to be the ones that are more invested in high ESG firms. We also find that investors are willing to be more patient with firms that have high ESG profiles, so that if they miss an earnings target or they have um, a period of poor stock returns, the investors are less likely to sell those stocks. They will, they will keep holding them and again be patient with, with the management of, of high ESG firms. Um, also in uh, my research that I talked about was a, a different study where we looked at how institutional investors view climate risk. And we find that they think climate risk is important they think financial risk is still the most important, but climate risk is important. And they have started to um, incorporate climate risk into their investment process. I think it's a positive movement that, that a lot of people have an interest in it, but, but, but we just don't want it to be something that people just tick the box and just do and say, we're, you know, we're certified, we're good even though it might be easier uh, for, from a research perspective that the definitions are better and clearer and so on. Yeah. We are very much focusing on highlighting these uh, entrepreneurs and the issues that they are solving and the ways that they are working to inspire more to do the same. Uh, that's, that's one of our major goals, to highlight these uh, entrepreneurs and, and their innovation um, scene, so to speak. And I think the wider message from this is that a company that treats their stakeholders well, this need not be at the expense of shareholders. So we often have the pie splitting mentality, which is that a company is a fixed pie, and so any slice of the pie that you give to stakeholders is at the expense of shareholders. So that's why some companies pay their workers as little as possible, or they may choose not to invest. But instead, companies should adopt the pie-growing mentality that if you invest in stakeholders, this may cost you in the short term, but in the long term, this grows the pie and actually creates more value, not only for the stakeholders, but also for shareholders alike. Like one thing that clearly stands out in the data is that unsustainable behavior by corporations is definitely punished by, by stock investors. So when, you know, when bad things happen, so accidents that have uh, negative implications for communities, for employees, for the environment as a whole, that really reduces share, shareholder value. I have two general themes, key messages from my presentation. First is I really wanted to emphasize to the group here today about delineating what impact investment opportunities and forcing the, those providing the opportunities, forcing them to say 
are we providing strictly for-profit financial returns that happen to be in the impact sector, or are we providing returns that, that provide some sort of social return as well as financial return, and what is the, the trade-off we might face to get that intentionality, or are we philanthropic? And I think it would help to mobilize more capital if we had more emphasis on these delineations. The second point is I talked about my research and about other research in this area where it seems for those that are those, those opportunities, the investment opportunities that have dual objectives, uh, there seems to be a willingness to pay of 3% in IRR um, by those that are facing, that are willing to invest in those opportunities. And I think that the takeaway from that is there is a willingness to pay and it behooves us in the financial sector and those that care about these issues to make sure we're optimizing the use of that money so that in aggregate we have impact.